What is going on everybody man? King Recon here and welcome to the Recon Space segment. Not only am I hyped because tomorrow's another chapter, another installment of the Wano Awesome Sauce. Not only that, but some sales numbers came out recently where it truly is still the best selling manga in history. And you already know we're going to talk about that tomorrow before the chapter before the chapter man. In the intro, we're gonna talk about that later. And if, I, and if I forget to talk about it, y'all slap me in the head in the comments section, man. No question. But uh, I'm also hyped because while researching for this video that I'm about to go through here right now, this episode of the Recons piece, which is something that I've been looking forward to, to doing for a long time, while researching and collecting information, I finally found a working link to certain specials that I have never watched before in One Piece Man. Do you know what, it, for me, as a longtime fan of this series, that I have watched through almost everything imaginable when it comes to the series, to find something from the annals of One Piece history that I'm gonna be able to finally talk about. And you know for a fact I'm gonna do a recons piece on it, man, especially with what I'm doing this year for the 20th anniversary. I'm gonna try to cover every single special slash mo or almost every special, because not every special is translated, but most of the specials and most of the movies, or all the movies have been translated, but not, not all the specials. So most of the specials, all the movies before the uh, uh, stampede comes out, right? So, you know, Originally, I was like, man, I'm only going to be able to do basically all the ones that I've watched, but today, I finally found this one that I had been looking for for so long, and it led me to finding others, and I was like, yo, new content for the series that I have been searching for for so long. And even when it was available back in the day, my idiot self was just too invested into either the manga or other things that I didn't get into. I, I didn't watch it. So, but now, now all these years later, that now my, my uh, because it, just in case y'all uh, y'all don't know, um, and I've spoken about this many times before, but uh, anyways, probably one of my favorite hobbies, uh, something that I do all the time is I go to either shops around here or just online in general and I try to find some stuff in its original broadcast format. I love television history. It's just something, I mean, history in general is something that intrigues me, but when it comes to something that I really, really like, like let's just say like for a One Piece, for example, or a Bleach or something like that, a Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball's television history is very, very fascinating too. But for One Piece, right? It's, it's, it's history on television both in... North America and in Japan is very, very interesting to me. And in, in, in Latino America, because that's how I first watched it. But um, in in terms of, of, of how it is that, uh, that, that I try to search for this stuff, it's so hard for me to find a broadcast version or something rare from the history of all this stuff. That's why every single time I see something rare, like a commercial that once aired on television, or a trailer that once aired in some random DVD for like a movie or something, I save those things, man. Like I do that for Evangelion as well. Like I love that kind of, that type of stuff. You know, um, it's, I don't know, it's just something I was born with, right? So when it comes, when it comes to that, I naturally, whenever I see certain uh, specials or certain things that are really, really rare, I want them. I want them, man. And, and when they're not available, they're way too expensive. I'm like, I'm just, whatever. I'm just not going to invest in that. At least not until like maybe one day down the line, I have millions of dollars and then I'll be able to do that, right? But not at this moment. But whenever I'm able to find, I found it, man. I finally found this, this special I've been looking for. And it led me to the other ones too. So I'm so hyped. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to sit down and watch that. I really, really can't, man. It's going to be great. And I can't wait to make a recon piece on it. But, yeah, man. It's, um, just this entire thing we're about to be talking about here is uh, something special to me. Um, like I said before, I re I'm really into collecting stuff and, and, and looking more deeper into the history of, of certain things that I'm interested in. And, of course, it won't be something I'm very interested in. So, when it comes to both its manga side, its in, in, in its weekly publication side, and, and its uh, weekly episodic experience side, 
we're going to be talking about that today, man. We're going to be talking about its history on Fuji TV, its history on television, and, um, you know, in order to kick off and start off this 20th anniversary recon piece uh, galore that I'm going to be doing here until the movie comes out. And, um, and I'm so glad that while researching for this, I was able to find those specials. So, but yeah, man, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Uh, before before we get into the history of the television ratings, I just want to give a huge shout out to uh, Big Evil from the Arlong Park forums. Because this individual w did one of the most gracious and incredible things and collected almost all the TV ratings for each individual episode from the year 1999 until 2016 and collected them into one big massive post and separated them in a very very nice manner so shout out to that dude once again that's big evil a b-i-g-i-v-e-l on the arlong park forums you are the true mvp you are the true mvp for for for, for separating and supporting it together this is oh, when i first saw your post uh, three years ago i've been wanting to make a video since then so here we are here we are, man. It's been a long time coming, but shout out to that individual for uh, for, for providing a lot of this information that, I, that I'm that i going off of for this video. So before we get into the history of TV ratings, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, general things. So of course, it won't be started on October 20th of 1999, and it's still ongoing to this very day. It's had several time slot changes, which I'll get to in a second. But let's go and talk about TV ratings in of itself. So, you know, television ratings in Japan the way that way the, the way that they work, just in case if you haven't or if you uh, if you were curious on why there's a percentage next to their numbers in comparison to our how we get our television ratings, uh, and and theirs there's is in percentages. So for example, whenever a Conan episode drops with like a Doraemon episode or a One Piece episode, and you go on Anime News Network and you see it says eight point four percent, nine point six percent, eleven point four percent, whatever the case that may be, what that is is that so what Japan does is. They take up, they, they they take up the size of the audience, which is determined by two factors: uh, the amount of content that is transmitted and the amount of content that is received. And of course, this varies from from firm to firm and, and whatnot. But uh, the percentages are the episodes viewership numbers divided by the market size. So when it comes to the market size, the way I take that is the way that we value uh, demographics over here in North America. So for example, Adult Swim. Uh, they value their demographics by uh, 18, uh, uh, age 18 and 34. Like that demographic is where they, uh, is where, like they could have like 3 million viewers in general, but what they're targeting, their main demographic is 18 and 34. So out of that 3 million individuals, uh, from their demographic of 18 to 34 is the, uh, is the target demographic. So from there, they get their ratings of, I don't know, I remember back in the days to share those on Dolce all the time, like Bleach would average like, 500 to 600,000 in just 18 to 34, which would, add, which would come out to like 2 million people just in general, or 1.8 million or something like that. So market size, that is what I'm assuming that means right there, that percentage. The percentage is just based off of their market, uh, of, of their target market and what they are trying to go out towards. Because I highly doubt it's possible that they can, of course, gauge every single individual that's, uh, that's ever watched One Piece on television. You know, like especially on a week-to-week -week basis. And I, I don't know, if, I don't know what their rating system goes off, goes off of. They do the Nielsen ratings as well as not. But it's going off of, of an assumption of what they have provided me on the internet through these, through researching, is that the the episode viewership is divided by the market size, which to me. Uh, indicates the demographic, and well, of course, one piece of demographic is a is is catered towards, let's just say, the ages of like six to like fifteen, eighteen, somewhere on there. So from from kids until young adults. All right, that's that that's one piece's main demographic. Oda says that he draws this for fifteen year old uh, kids. That that's that, that that's what he said when he hit when he's drawing the story. He has that in mind. So I'm just basing it off that. I'm basing, or, or I think that's what they base it off of, whenever they say the percentages are the episode's viewership numbers divided by the market size. Just overall episode viewership divided by the market size equals percentage. So, so yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the way that I, um, 
that I have perceived that uh, information. So let's go, to, go, go through some general things of uh, One Piece's history on TV before we go into the actual ratings themselves. So um, One Piece, of course, airs on the Fuji Television Network and, uh, and has from October 20th, 1999 until present day. However, it's gone through several time slot changes. So from October 20th, 1999 until March 2001, it aired on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, just in the same way that over here, primetime television is 8 o'clock at night, over there in Japan, primetime television is in the evenings. You know, unless it's on weekends. Weekends, you, you can get away with the morning and the nighttime time slot. But when we're talking about just the evenings on, uh, on, on weekdays, that is still considered primetime television. So the fact that One Piece was airing at 7 p.m., which was also in the in the similar time slot where Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball was once airing in, in that uh, eve evening time slot, you know, so you knew that you knew that they expected big things from One Piece by putting it in that Wednesday 7 p.m. time slot, which was of course uh, Tor Toriyama once held, or at least uh, Dragon Ball once held that very same. Uh, little time slot, so they they had a lot of high expectations for One Piece for for whenever it came in. So I'm, I'm glad that it delivered up to expectations. But anyways, uh, and it aired uh, until March 2001st at that time slot, and then from March 2001 until January 2005, it went to Sundays. So it changed from Wednesdays at at that time slot at Wednesdays at uh, 7 p.m. to Sundays now at 7 30 p.m now to us that you, you know I, i've watched a lot of sports so usually the big time games that they have during playoff season or just in general during like football let's just say football holds most of the highest ratings of the year right now a lot of those come from the the Sunday night uh, primetime NFL games that air like at 8.15 or whenever it's basketball season, they'll have like a game on ABC that'll be playing at like 8 p.m. because that's prime time. That is either Saturday or Sunday night, which is either taken by college football, regular NFL football, or it's taken by, by basketball during the playoffs. So 8 p.m. on Sunday is prime time for us. In Japan, it, it holds that same value, 7.30 p.m. On Sundays. Now remember, during this time, 2001, this is Alabasta, man. This is Alabasta. March 2001 until 2005. So that's Alabasta, Skypea, Water 7, heading into Annie's Lobby. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Then, from January 2005 until October 2006, the series was airing uh, on... Uh, so it changed again. It went, it went back like a little bit. So it was uh, from January 2005 until October 2006, it was airing instead of at 7.30 p.m. at 7 p.m. So the similar time as, as it did previously on Wednesday at 7 p.m., but now just on Sunday at 7 p.m. And then we had the what most people call the dreaded time slot change, which is from October 2006 until present day, the series now airs at 9.30 a.m. on Sundays. So... It went from airing in the evenings of primetime TV to now airing in the mornings on Sunday, all right? And this is a pretty big time slot change, especially just in general for... for There's a reason why, not even just in TV or like even whenever you look at certain YouTubers, a lot of the YouTubers, they look at their, at their videos, they look at their analytics and they say, what videos or what content, when does my content do better? Like at, at what time does does better um, and that type of, like uh, just in general like you notice that a lot of bigger YouTubers they publish videos at always at specific times so like let's just say somebody always publishes every single day at 11 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. and people are used to that they're expecting that right another person um, will do it like every single day at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. or it's only specific videos like they'll only publish say for like an anime youtuber they'll only publish Dragon Ball like 5 p.m. so 5 p.m. 5 p.m. maybe the reason for this is because kids are getting out of school they calculate that everyone needs something to eat while maybe while they're eating dinner and they say okay we're gonna release this Every single day at 5 p.m. and that's what that's what that's why it does massive numbers for them here on YouTube, whatever the case may be. Television stations are no different. So when you look at it from that standpoint, the fact that they changed it from Sunday at 7 p.m. 
to Sunday at 9.30 a.m. was huge. And it I, and it really did damage, or uh, not really damage, but the ratings for One Piece fell off the cliff for a while. And it was in the middle of Annie's lobby, man. So we'll get to that whenever we get to it. But um, it's just, it's interesting how just the difference of a time slot change can do to how many people are watching your program because they're so used to watching it at one point in time and maybe some other people can't watch it at the other time. You know, but for, for, you know, for a lot of people, maybe that 7 o'clock or that 7.30's time slot on Sunday night was was their constant. Like, okay, I would go home, watch One Piece. You know, like on, on Sundays, you go out with your family, come back home on Sunday night, One Piece is on. Whatever the case may be. And then that time slot changed, and then 30 in the morning changed a lot of things. So, but we'll, we'll we'll get to that right now. We'll get to that right now. So, starting things off, once again, let's go back in time to this is from October 20th, 1999, to the, uh, to going in, well, never, basically when it was airing on Wednesdays. So, when One Piece first started back in the Romance Dawn saga, man, the first episode of One Piece came with a 12.4%. Uh, rating, which for me is huge. Uh, the average population of Japan from 1999 until now has been between the means of 126 million to 128 million people. If you divide that by the number of, of kids and adults, which is the Fuji television market, and um, uh, like, uh, so, so, so you, so you take, let's just say, I don't know, uh, let's go, let's go and bring up a calculator right here. Just to bring into like a average size, so let's um bring up a calculator right here. So let's just say it's a. Come on, coach. So let's just say we have 126 million individuals right here. Come on, skip. So we have 126 million people, and then let's go ahead and divide that by the market, which is I don't know. Let's just say that 15 percent of Japan as has uh is 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 filled with kids in that demographic or young adults or the case maybe. so we do that and then that comes out to eight million four hundred thousand people you know so then you take that in of itself the market and then let's just say so it's in the market eight million four hundred eight four hundred thousand people so let's say the episode did i don't know uh four Four million, four million, four million, four million of those people watched it. So, well, no, actually, no, no we can actually calculate that. So, twelve point four. So, hold on, let me go back. Let me, let me go. Let me go back. So, eight, eight million four hundred thousand divided by twelve point four, and we can, you know, six hundred and seventy-seven thousand four hundred nineteen uh, individuals from that market to watch One Piece. Like that is how they calculate the ratings. You know, you take your market, which is, let's just say if it's 8 million people, um, or whatever the case may be, which, which is, which is your kids. And then you, uh, you divide that by 12.4% or which is, and then you would probably get your episode numbers, which for them is the episode numbers divided by the market. But that's just the way I would, uh, that, that I see that happening. Regardless, that's still a lot of people watching. So, um, during the romance dawn stuff, well, but well, not, not think about it. Uh, 8 million for, for only 8 million uh kids that probably isn't a very accurate uh thing but regardless that that, that was just an example that was just an example so uh let's just say uh you times that by a whole bunch and one piece is probably averaging like five i mean a bunch of millions of people were probably watching this all right whenever whenever, whenever it started coming up but anyways so let's go and look at the ratings so for the romance dawn saga the first episode of one piece the first episode with Alvida and Kobe, you remember it, man, when you fell in love with the series, brought in a 12.4% rating, which is followed by week two, 11.7, week three, episode three, which is the, uh, um, towards the end of the Morgan stuff, you have, you got a 13.3% uh, percent rating, and then on, on um, the fourth week of episode four, you had 12.9. So the average for the Romance Dawn saga was a 12.6%. Uh, uh, percent rating which is very very impressive for a series that's just starting off in a time slot at wednesday night after dragon ball so then after that you go into the uh, into the buggy stuff and it it was a pretty uh you know for episodes five six seven and eight they all pretty much averaged six through eight actually all averaged 12.3 uh if, 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 every single episode in the first episode episode five averaged the highest average so far which is um 13.5 uh, percent rating so episode five brought in 13 
13.5 of a rating. So that was that, that was very, very interesting that that um starting off a new arc and it got this big massive number and then for the next couple of episodes it, they were all the same ratings so all the, they had the same people watching every every week at least so uh the orange town saga and the buggy arc averaged to 12.6 so the same average as the romance dawn arc so so far one piece is averaging around 12.6 of a rating every single week now now we're getting into some bigger numbers so during the syrup village arc during usopp's arc we have uh uh, the biggest rating here is from episode 13, which ran a 14.7. But overall, we were getting 11s, 12s, 13s, 14s. Uh, the average for the entire arc was 13.3. So once again, escalating slowly but surely. People are really getting invested. I know that during the Syrup Village arc is when uh, certain individuals here in, in, in North America uh, were really, really getting into uh, the series because that's whenever the Captain Kuro stuff was going down and certain uh, emotional developments were going down. So I know this um, this arc has a special place in some individuals' hearts for for being like that arc that started it for them. Now let's get into another arc that a lot of people hold really high, and uh, the Baratier arc. So the Baratier arc brought in, once again, another uh, high so far from the series with uh, both episodes 20 and 21 bringing in a 15 uh, point oh rating so and one and i think episode 20 if i'm not mistaken it's it is the introduction of sanji if i'm not mistaken because i know episode 19 is zoro's flashback and episode 20 is the first this is the first official episode of the brati arc so um i and that was sanji's introduction if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken so that episode brought in a 15 which was the highest rating so far i just wonder if like on television there's probably a commercial with like oh we're introducing sanji this week on the Piece anime stay tuned da, 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 and watch those because for two weeks back to back it came in with a 15.0 rating so and that's really really impressive so i did that for those two weeks there and the average rating overall for the arc was a 12.9 which is still very very good because considering that the broad a arc was 12 episodes um, the average rating is 12.9. That's that's excellent, considering that it's the longest arc so far. And then we head into my baby, man. We head into the arc that, you know, the previous arcs, I had already been really invested into the series, but this is what made me a fan forever. The Arlong Park Saga, man. Now, what's interesting about the Arlong Park Saga is that it stayed with the same high of 15. 15.0 was the highest that an episode got, which was during episodes 42 and 43. However, the average rating for the arc, even though it was a longer arc of 14 episodes, well, the average rating was 13.2. The average rating for Arlong Park was a 13.2. People were watching, man. People were tuning in. And I mean, these episodes were killing it. Now, one episode that caught me off guard that, uh, that didn't do that well, even though it's one, one of the most iconic episodes in the series and one of my favorite episodes in the series, is episode 37. Because, so l let me just go ahead and read it since it's long Park, I'll, I'll read them all. Episode 31 did an 11.5, which is, I believe, the second lowest on the list behind 37. 30, like I said, 37, the most iconic, ep one of the most iconic episodes in the series. For some people, this is the most iconic moment in the entire series, and it got the lowest rating in the entire arc. It's crazy how things work, man. It's crazy how things work. So episode 31 can 11.5, 32 a 13.1, 33 a 13.1, 34 12.7, 35 11.5, 36 12.2, episode 37 got an 11.4. And what's crazy is that people must have been talking about it because after that, it spiked and it never went down. After episode 37, even though it was the most the least viewed episode, people must have gone to school or to work, whatever, and was like, yo, man, you gotta watch this One Piece series. Because after that, it jumped a whole two points and never came back down. Look at this. After Legendary episode 37, which is, just in case you don't know, it's the, um, it's whenever the, uh, the legendary Nami stabbing herself, uh, with the, with, with, with the knife trying to take out the Arlong Mark, and she tells Luffy to help her, man, one of the, Luffy, Tusk, it, you know, one of the most incredible moments in the series, Luffy puts a strat on their, on their head, and the walk to Arlong Park commences, man, and seriously, I'm, I'm telling you, one of the most iconic moments in this series, love that moment with all my heart, without that moment, I probably wouldn't be here, and that was the least viewed episode in Arlong Park, but, because of the impact of that episode, the rest of the arc averaged at least a 13. Look at this. Episode 38, 
13.6, episode 39, 14.4, episode 40, 13.6, 41, 13.6, 42, 15, 43, 15, 44, 13.2, 45, 13.6. So even though maybe not that many people tuned in to episode 37, the impact of that episode got enough people talking to where it stayed above two, above two of the, of the previous average. Incredible. Incredible the impact of episode 37, man. Inc that, that is what, that, that's what you call impact right there, man. That is how you know that people were talking about One Piece after that episode. That is how you know that that episode is truly iconic, man. So it was really, really cool to see that, of how that episode, even though it, 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 it really wasn't uh, the most viewed episode of the arc, it most certainly was the most impactful. Because after that episode, what came after, everybody started watching. Everybody started watching, man. So that was really, really cool. Uh, the impact that episode 37 has, because I love episode 37, man. It's freaking walk to our long park, for God's sakes. So that was, uh, that was some great stuff right there. And it's interesting, too, how the second lowest rating, once again, belongs to Nami's flashback, which is something that all of us love. But anyways, uh, regardless, uh, we, we continue. It's just very interesting how it works. Then we have the, uh, the buggy side story arc, which I wished it would do more of these with the, with the cover pages. That one came in and averaged a 13.95 rating. Like, I'm telling y'all, man, after that episode, after the Walk to Harlem Park episode, One Piece was booming, man. Right here, episode 46, 14.4, 47, 13.5. Then we head into Logue Town. Logue Town was killing it. Logue Town coming up in strong, averaging a 14.9 rating. It, Logue Town almost averaged a 15. A 15 rating man that's massive that is huge huge all right you, you you take that into consideration that nowadays the highest that you'll see is um is like a an 11 or, or a 12 right on, on on anime news network like you go on there and you'll see okay uh certain series is like they're coming in a certain week with 12 11 10 yo Hope is out here averaging an 14.9 during Logue Town. All right. Now, then again, television was booming more back then, but still, that's very, very impressive. Then we head into Warship Island. This one blew my mind. Now, this filler arc, a lot of you, I don't know how many of you actually watched this, but I watched it. I watched it because when I first got into One Piece, I didn't even know what filler was. So, the Warship Island arc, a.k.a. the Apis arc, man. This arc, I'm not going to lie, has a special place in my heart. I love this arc. And one of these days, I'm going to have to rewatch this filler and talk about it on the channel. But a filler brought in the highest rating seen thus far, bro. Listen to this. Episode 58 brought in a 16.6, but that's not even the most impressive part. From episode 58 to 61, these are the following ratings. 16.6, 16.6, 16.3, 16. During a filler. During a filler. During a filler, man! We're out here doing big numbers. Big numbers. So the overall rating, the overall average for the East Blue Saga was 13.6, which is very, very impressive. Very, very impressive for a series that is just starting off, man. Right off the bat, Taking after Dragon Ball, which, of course, GT was the last thing that was airing there. And GT, I don't think its ratings were doing very, very well, but it's still freaking Dragon Ball. But uh, after that, you had One Piece going up in, like, somewhere. And, man, dude, I mean, just seeing the change. You know, once again, when it first came in, 12.4. And then as it went on, it was mainly, mainly staying around the 12, 13 range. But as it went on, more, more people started watching, more people started watching. Episode 37 hit, you had more 13, 14, 15, averaging every week, 13, 14, 15. Then you had during Logetown, 15, straight up, straight up 15. During the Warship Island of Filler Art, you had 15 to 16 every week. Incredible. Incredible, man. So yeah, the East Blue Saga, 13.6 uh, average. Now let's head into Alabasta, man. Now... Just in case y'all don't know, it, and if it because you I uh, don't know how many of you have just got into the series recently or uh, or the case may be, but back in the day, Alabasta was the arc. When I first got into One Piece, Alabasta was the arc. This was the arc that everybody was talking about. This this arc was the jam. Everybody loved Alabasta. 
Alabasta was what Soul Society was to is is to Bleach and what Chunin Exams is to Naruto. That was Alabasta to One Piece. Even though Arlong Park is what solidified a lot of our love for the series, Alabasta put One Piece on the map, not only just here in America, but also in Japan. And, you know, Marine Ford made it the global phenomenon that it is, and Annie's lobby helped towards that as well as what was Water 7. But Alabasta was huge. And for people who have been longtime fans of the series, they know what I'm talking about, man. There's a reason why in J Stars you had Alabasta, even though Marine Ford had already been out. It's because the creators behind Shonen Jump, they remember that Alabasta, boom. And so when Jump Force came out, of course, they added Marine Ford because that's when One Piece was at its peak in popularity. But Alabasta was like when it first shot out and just started taking over. So let's go ahead and go through the saga right quick, man. So right here, during the Laboon stuff reverse mountain, it was averaging a 13.7, which actually did a 13.7 both weeks in a row. Now, listen to this. This made me really happy as a fan of this arc. I love to rewatch Whiskey Peak. I love that arc so much. And in the anime, it is fantastic. I love it in the manga, but in the anime, it just has special place in my heart, man. That junk came in, the Whiskey Peak, the first episode of Whiskey Peak, 17.2. And the week after, 17.2. Whiskey Peak averaged 15.9. Almost a 16 rating, bro. Whiskey Peak was going up in there like swimwear, man. In their, like, flipping swimwear. And actually, uh, episode, what is it? Um, It's, uh, uh, let me go ahead and go through it. Episode 66, which is the Luffy versus uh, Zoro episode that has it in the in the title, that one actually dropped in ratings, and I expected that one to be the ratings wrap. There's a reason why the title comes out, because people look at their, at their TV guides and they're like, oh my god, Luffy vs. Zoro, let me tune in. It actually dropped three ratings. Maybe that's why I never fought again. Maybe that's why Oda never put Luffy and Zoro to fight again. Because Toy was like, hey man, our ratings dropped when we put Luffy vs. Zoro in the title. Let's not do that again, <laughs> Let's not do that again, coach. But anyways, then we have the Kobe and Helmopo side story, which I don't know why they don't animate more cover pages, man. But that one did really, really well, 15.2. Then during Little Garden. Now, Little Garden, it 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 um, it um still did a pretty solid average, but you could see a little bit of a, de of a decline here. We see that it averaged a 14.2, which is still very, very good. And its highest rating was that from, came from episode 74, which um, which is whenever, I believe that's when our Mr. 3 uh, is starting off in um, his little candle thing. But anyways... Uh, Episode 74 was its highest, 15.6, and its lowest came from episode 72, which is 12.5. So this is still a very highly rated arc in, in its own regards, but it was still a decline from previous averages, which were coming in with like 15s and whatnot, going down to 14.2. So then you have one of the most popular arcs in the series, uh, one of my personal favorites, definitely my top 10, and, a and an arc that a lot of people hold near and dear to their hearts, Drum Island, man. Drum Island averaged a 15.1, but not only that, not only that, this is one of the arcs where its key episodes actually did the monster ratings. The key episodes, as in Chopper, the end of Chopper's flashback, and the final episode of Drum Island with the cherry blossoms going up, which is my two most memorable moments from that arc. You know, the arc has a lot of other great moments with like, uh, one, another moment I really love is Luffy and the... And the Lopin, whenever he raises up the Lopin and saves the Lopin, and they and, and they go back to him and they respect him for that. Like that episode, I, that junk actually makes me tear up, bro. Like it's a beautiful moment. Um, whenever they go back to repay him as well. But Luffy climbing up, man, up that mountain with both Sanji and Nami. Oh man, dude. And you see, God, the way they animated that. Oh, the will. Luffy's will, man. And then of course, uh, Luffy telling Chopper to shut up, let's go, and um, fighting uh Wop hole and putting the flag. I mean, legendary moments. Very, very legendary moments. That arc is a great arc for Luffy, man. Like, if you're a Luffy Tard, whew, that arc is a phenomenon. And that's why I like it so much, because I love me some Luffy. But it was very interesting to me how the monster ratings came from Chopper's flashback with a 16.0 and the end of the arc with the cherry blossoms going up in 16, that's 16.3. Because normally when it comes to this kind of stuff, the big arcs or the the main moments you don't see the impact until episodes later those episodes people were tuning in that was been manga readers saying i'm gonna go watch that episode i'm gonna watch that episode man so that was some great uh right there the overall the entire arc never went to a 12 it the lowest it went to was a a 
And then aside from that, it's steadily averaged between the 15, 14, and 16 range. I mean, incredible. Absolutely incredible, man. Drum Island was killing it. But now let's head into Alabasta. Now let's head into Alabasta, man. Now the very first uh, portion of Alabasta here, the, the, uh, uh, the very first episode of the arc came with a 16.3, very, very strong. Episode 95 of Alabasta, which when you go back and you research it, Episode 95 is Ace and Luffy. All right, that, that's whenever they, they get reunited and they're together and we get to see their, their reunion. This episode by far was the highest rated episode of this time. When I tell you this rating, this is a monster rating. Detective Conan at the time was the ratings juggernaut of a lifetime. Detective Conan was averaging this type of episodes on a, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis but the thing is conan was airing in prime literal prime time television so a conan special all right a detective conan special would come with like a 19 or a 20 21 uh rating now it's a special that's a special ace and luffy's episode in alabasta had a 19.1 People must have seen that in the guide that Luffy's brother was coming in and everyone tuned in. 19.1? That is three. Three whole numbers ahead of the previous high, which came from the Warship Island arc. 19.1 for Luffy and Ace and the reading in Alabasta. Unbelievable, man unbelievable 19.1 and that is by far the highest rating of the arc all right so you have uh, other big numbers came in from let's go ahead and look at another uh another iconic episode here uh, so both episodes um so episode 119 which is a, a very popular episode amongst the community which is uh, zoro versus mr one that one came in with a 12.6 uh, rating which was pretty in the middle for this arc toward the lower end um, you had episode 126, which which is uh, Luffy vs. Crocodile round 3. That one is a 13.2. And then episodes 129 and 130, which is what to me is anime. Like that legendary Nakama scene when they throw up the X. That, I mean, look at it. I have it right here. I love, I love that portion. And um, that scene to me is anime, man. Or it just is cartoons, right? And, and I love that scene so much whenever they all throw up the X. And those two episodes right there with uh, Vivi recalling the entire adventure. A 12.6 and a 13.8, so that was uh, pretty solid. Another one that did a really, really high number was episode 114, which came in with a 16 rating. Uh, that one, I believe, is the Usopp and Chopper. Uh, Usopp and Chopper versus... Uh, and, 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 no, was it was their episode? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Coach. But um, it is theirs right there. Let me, let, me, let me pull it up, actually. Let me pull up the episodes right here and um, just have them on standby. Just in case, get my facts straight. You know what I'm saying? I gotta get my facts straight. But yeah, for sure, uh, Alabasta did a phenomenal job. Just the average, to have all these averages. I mean, it continued to have 16s, 15s, 14s. I mean, it was killing it. But that 19.1 rating for Luffy and Ace is, is insane. So Alabasta averaged pretty much a 14 for its entire arc, which is very, very impressive considering that Alabasta went from episode 92 to episode 130. That's a freaking huge arc. That is a massive arc right yeah by those times the longest arc by far and it still averaged an insanely high number so shout out to alabasta for coming in strong so then we head into the filler arc after alabasta uh the first initial one before before we got into the uh excuse me before we get into like the the gold island and the rainbow mist we 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 got the initial like couple of little filler chapters or filler episodes and those they, they did pretty okay we averaged around 12.8 so the overall average Alabasta saga, so this is when the Alabasta saga ends, episode 135. The overall saga of Alabasta going from Reverse Mountain, so the Baroque Works saga from, from Reverse Mountain until now averaged a 14.4. That is insanely good, man. Insanely good. So now we head into Skypea. Now Skypea, Goat Island, solid, average of 12.8. Rainbow Mist, which is an arc I, I really, really enjoyed. Um, well, probably my favorite fill. Well, now nah, G eight and this one, I, I really enjoy those fillers a lot. But uh, the Rainbow Mist, the first episode of Rainbow Mist, brought in a sixteen point two. That's a monster rating, man. A sixteen point two. 
So, um, you know, people were really tuning in for that rainbow mist, man. <laughs> people were really tuning in for the, for the rainbow mist dark greatness. So now we head into Jaya, uh, which is a fan favorite. It's one of my favorites. It's, um, if you combine both this and Skypiea, it's a top five arc for sure. I, I, uh, I, I love this saga with all my heart. So this one right here averaged a 14.2, but the big, massive, impressive number here is at episode 146, which whenever you whenever you look it up, it's when they first drop down into Mock Town, and they first get to Mock Town, man. Episode 146, guys, brought in a 19.1 rating. So not just once, but twice in a, in a regular episode, not a special, in a regular episode, One Piece came with a 19.1 rating. Specials from Conan, the ratings juggernaut. Average that in a special, or, or at least get that in a special. But a flipping random episode of Jaya? Getting a 19 point one, yo, man. Yo, let's go. And that is by far the highest rating in the arc. Like, for example, the closest thing to that is, um, let me see, a 14.2. So you go from 14.2 to 19.1. And the 14.2 came from episode 151, which is one of the best episodes to me in the whole series. I mean, from just from my, uh, it's it's like a top 10, top 15 episode. Uh, the One Million Berry Man, when Luffy one shots Bellamy, and we get to and we get to see all of what's going on in the world. We see Doflamingo for the first time, Kuma for the first time. We get to see what's going on in the Reverie. Lafitte shows up. I mean, great episode, man. Great stuff, dog. And um, and that one got the second highest rating in the in the arc behind them initially arriving on Mock Town. She got a 19.1. That's crazy. So Jaya averaged a 14.2. Skypea, man. Now Skypea is or got the lowest average and the lowest ratings in general out of the entire series so far. And it is pretty interesting to me because I know from for people that were experiencing Skypea weekly, they always tell me that Skypea, after rereading it or after uh, watching it, I had the pleasure of binging Skypea. But for the people that went through it weekly, uh, both either in the anime or in the or in the manga, they have a lot of issues with it. Um, they have, or at least they did uh, at the time, because they just felt like it was it was so long that it was taking away from 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 the enjoyment of the saga. And uh, and you and you can see that there was at least some sort of deterioration here, and you had people coming back, people coming in, people coming back. But you definitely had the lowest ratings of the series so far during the Skypiea saga. So it once again, uh, it came back down to to Earth, and it started off with twelves, thirteens, twelves, elevens, and then it hit its lowest ratings ever during this stretch right here, which is from episode one hundred sixty one. Which let me pull it up right here. Um, episode 161 is whenever they start the or the ordeals, like going through the ordeals uh, and all of that stuff right there, uh, which was a 10.1. You got a 10.1, a 10.0, a 10.2. Up before this, low, One Piece's lowest was like an 11.1 or something like that, but it never got down to the 10s. But now it was hitting 10s a lot. 10.1, 10.0, 10.2, jumped up to 12.9, 12, 12 10.7. And then episode 168, which is the episode right after its second highest rating, which is NL's introduction, uh, episode 167. I love that episode, by the way. NL, man. Which, so episode 167 did it with 13.2. The episode after that got an 8.9. Its lowest rating by far so far in the series. The week after, it came in with a 12.4. And then it, it it started booming again, man. Like 12.4, keep going back to a 10, 14, 13. I mean, it was killing it. 10.7, and then it was killing it there for a while. You're doing good. And then you, you then you get down to, and this one makes me so sad, man. You get down to the Nolan and Calgara flashback stuff. And those episodes, actually, no, 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 no. It wasn't those episodes. It was Luffy, Luffy running up the, the beanstalk, burning a 9.9. And then when it got back to Nolan Kogara, we started averaging high numbers, baby, because those are that, that, that portion of the arc was fire. So, um, Luffy running up the Beanstalk, running a 9.9, .9, which is once again another low. But then it jumped back to 11.3, and then during the Nolan Kogara flashback stuff, which is why I'm so glad I had these right here to, for, to fact check myself. Episode 187 to 189, which which does cover the Nolan Kogara flashback stuff. Listen to this: 187, 13.7; 13 188, 13.7; 189, 12.3. So Nolan Kagawa flashback, putting in big numbers, probably the 
highest numbers in the in the saga from what I can see. So Nolan and Kogara's flashbacks did the highest numbers on television for that uh, arc, which is very, very impressive. So um, so then rest of the arc, 9.8, 10.2, and that makes me very, very sad because uh, Luffy ringing the bell is one of the most iconic moments in the entire series, and the fact that that, that one got a, it, it, that it didn't get a really high rating, and nothing around it got a pretty high rating is, is pretty sad, but regardless, still an iconic moment. But the rest of the arc, it did okay. 9.8, 10.2, 11, 12, 11.7, 10. So the average for the arc was 11.8. Uh, Skype is a really, really long arc. So the fact that it's still averaging a, almost a 12 is really, really impressive. But you could see here the decline in certain people's interests that it was definitely going down a bit, going down a bit. And this is around the time that it had gone through its initial time slot change uh, to Sundays at 7 p.m. And so um, there was definitely, there was some sort of effect there. But aside from that, um, there was definitely uh, there was definitely a decline in, in in interest when it came to Skype. Even though there it was, there was still a lot of people watching, but it never got up to the 15s or 16s. So that's that's a shame. And I love me some Skype, but it appears that <laughs> that uh, there's even though there was a lot of people that loved it, there was definitely a lot of people that were tuning out of that one, which is a shame. But regardless, uh, then we head into the G8 arc, and the G8 arc averaged an 11.5. Uh, this is definitely a fan favorite filler, and actually two episodes from the G8 arc did higher than anything in Skypea, which to me just baffles my mind. Um, episodes 204 and 205 ran a 15.2 rating, which is massively huge. So the average uh, rating for Skypea, or for the entire saga, was a 12.8. It's almost a 13, so very, very good. Now we head into Water 7, guys, and Water 7 was whenever the series first went into HD. And by Water 7, I mean the David Back fight, Long Ring Long, episode 206 or 7, I think it's 207. Episode 207 um, was the first HD episode. That was the first time where we actually started getting into, um, you know, HD One Piece. And a little bit after, that's when, or during Eni's Lobby, that's whenever the series changed. Uh, into, or during this stuff is whenever it changed from 7.30 to 7 at, at night. And then it also, it, it, around this time is also whenever it went to, um, whenever it's going into Annie's Lobby, is whenever it's changed from 7 p.m. at night to 9.30 in the morning. But we'll get to that in a sec. So the Davy Back fight, man. The greatness of the Davy Back fight. The Davy Back fight averaged an 11.8, the same thing as uh, the Skypea Saga. Uh, the highest number from the Davy Back fight came from episode 214, um, but overall it was averaging around like a 10, 11, somewhere around that range. Then we have the Ocean's Dream arc, which is a filler arc. That one uh, averaged an 11. Then we had Foxy's Return, which averaged 10.5. And then we head into Water 7, guys. Now, Water 7, and this is why I, I continue to say that there's just certain things that you cannot indicate based off of ratings, but also you have to take into account the time slot change because a minuscule of a time slot change during this stuff was made a huge impact on Water 7. Now, Water 7 got massive bigs and low lows during the Water 7 saga. Listen to this. So I'm just gonna bring up some iconic episodes for, for, for us, right? Episode 234, The Walk to the Frankie House. That brought in a 10. A 10, you know, still, still solid, but a 10. 235, The Beginning of Luffy vs. Usopp, 12. 236, Luffy vs. Usopp, 11.9. Couple episodes later, episode 239 brought in a 9.1, 240, 8.7, 241, 9.4. And then you got back to the 10s, 12s, episode 246 at a 16.7. I mean, huge, right? Massive. 13.3, 11.2, it was killing it. Then back, 9.8, 9.8. And the reason for it is because of that one little minuscule time slot change. They went from 7.30 to 7. And you're like, what in the flying flag darts? So then it, it, like, it just goes up and down, up and down. You know, 9.7, 8.7, 13.9, 9.9, 11.1. .9, so then here we head into Annie's Lobby. Now, Annie's Lobby was insanely popular, but at the same time, this is during the time slot change. All right, this is during the time slot change. So I'm going to read to you, just to, just so you guys can see the difference. This is before the, the, the time slot change and after the time slot change. So before the time slot change, episodes 264 to 278, so from the moment it gets to Annie's Lobby until Robin says, I want to live. The highest rating of this arc by far is the episode where Robin says she wants to live. 
13.2, which of course deserves it. One of the best episodes of the entire series. But the episodes, whenever Luffy goes here second for the first time, got a 9.4 and 9.1 rating. I can't believe it. Man. I, if, I, if I were watching on TV and I saw a commercial for Luffy, for Luffy going here second, they obviously did not market that episode well if it brought a 9.1 rating. All right? They did not market that episode well. Because I know if I was a kid, I mean, even as an adult, I see Luffy going here second in a commercial, bro. I'm, I'm tuning in. Are you kidding me, coach? But anyways, so uh, Annie's Lobby averaged a 10.5. Uh, but just just to give you a quick example, 9.2, 10.5, 11.5, 10.1, 9.4, 10.3, 13.2, 13.2. Now listen to this. After the time slot change, which was from 7 p.m. at night until 9.30 in the morning, at 9.30 a.m., in its first episode there, a 6.7 rating. Now, that, granted, this was a recap episode, but 6.7... 6.2, 6.6, 6.5, 6.4. By far the lowest rating so far. You get out of the recaps, and it continues staying this low. Hell, it gets even lower. 6.9, 6.3, 5.6, 8.1, 5, 5.1, lowest so far by far. 7.4, 7.3. 7 so the time slot change decimate. I mean, it, it fell off the cliff. One Piece's ratings fell off the cliff. And this, this is during Annie's lobby. And the ratings got dem I mean, God, I fell off the cliff. So then you have the rest of the episodes in the arc, 7.4, 6.8, 7.9, 8.1, 8.0. So starting to slowly but surely gain traction again. Then it really started to gain traction again towards the end. People started coming back. They're like, yo, what, bees? It's, it's airing at 9.30 in the morning now. Listen to this, 9.7. So this is during Luffy vs. Luchi. 9.7, 10.5, 10.5, 7.7. Now, this is crazy. Episode 308, the episode before the Jet Gatling, which is the most iconic moments ever, uh, got a 10.5. Episode 309, the Jet Gatling episode, got a 7.7, .7, the lowest out of the entire batch. I'm like, how, how is that even possible? But anyways, it had it had it had a sort of effect where same thing as the Walk to Along Park episode, to where even though that got a 7.7 .7 rating, the episode after got a three, got a 9.5, and then the Mary's funeral episode got a 10.1. So then you have the average for their Annie's lobby is a 7.8, or I'm sorry, uh, not a 7.8, a 9.2. So the average for Annie's Lobby is a 9.2, and that is because of the time slot change. Before the time slot change, it was doing okay, it was doing pretty average for its time, but you could see that people weren't tuning in after the time slot change, man. Like, they are like, nah, bro, screw that. And then after that, people started finding it again, they're like, all right, so it's getting traction again. So, and then post Annie's Lobby was doing pretty okay too, with the highest rating being a 10.4. It's the lowest rating being a 7.3, so it did it did pretty okay for the time. So the average rating for the Water 7 Saga was a 10.4. Now I feel sorry for Thriller Bark, man. Thriller Bark got it pretty pretty bad. Thriller Bark got it pretty bad, man. So uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and skip the the filler arc before uh, Thriller Bark, but so the Thriller Bark arc, uh, just for I mean it ne it only reached during episode 379. That was the only episode that got above a, a 10.2 or above a 10. Everything else was below 10. Episode 379 was the only episode above a 10. Everything else was 6.5, 9.0, 7.2, 5.9, 7 7.8. I mean, Thriller Bark did not do very, very well in the ratings. I mean, in the time slot change, like I said, it, it really drove it off a cliff, man. So it averaged a 7.7, .7, Thriller Bark did. And it's a shame because that's, a, that's such an awesome mark. But people weren't tuning in, man. They were not tuning in. So then we head into the saga that no matter what time slot it's in, it cannot be stopped. <laughs> it cannot be stopped, man. So we're heading into the Summit War Saga, uh, the Paramount War Greatness. And um, this right here is gonna is very, very interesting to me because you, you see the ratings right now, right? Now watch this. Sabaori Archipelago. <laughs> Sabaori. Brought in its highest rating so far since it came back in 11.7 with, with episode 398, which is episode 398 is whenever Law, Kid, and Luffy are fighting together. Legendary episode. But you start seeing more of a higher average now. 10.1, 11.7, 10.4, 10.6, 10, 10, 9.8. I mean, it, it started getting back to business. You know, the episode with the... So Luffy punching the Salsa Dragon, 9.9. .9. Um, Rayleigh meeting the Straw Hats, episode 400 with the Roger stuff, 10.4. The Straw Separation episode ten, so you could see it was it was it was doing good. Amazon Lily, all right. Amazon Lily, um, averaged ten point four. Saw so elevens, 
tens, but no twelves yet, right? Impel down. Impel down brought One Piece back up to its glory. It, even in its new time slot, even in its new time slot, the combination of the manga being in Marineford and the anime being in Impel Down caused One Piece to have, I mean, now granted, as time went on and the internet started taking, taking over and everything, and ratings overall in general were just really, really low at the time for everything in both North America, Japan, everything, like ratings, people weren't watching as much TV as before, but it, that didn't stop Impel Down. That did not stop Impel Down. Impel Down. For the first time since, not only the time slot change, for the first time since I would dare say Alabasta. No, no, no I would say for the first time since Skypiea. Because Water 7 was doing really good numbers, but it was, it was, it was inconsistent. So for the first time since Skypiea. Oh, no, not even that. It was the first time since Alabasta. One Piece never went below a 10. Dude, it, I mean, One Piece was killing it. 11, 10.9, 11.6, 11.9, 13 .0, 12, 12.1, 12.2, 11.9, 13.8, 12.9, 13.5, 13.9. I mean, yo, Impel Down was killing it. It felt like old One Piece again. It goes back in its former time slot. Like, now the time slot ch change didn't even matter. People were tuning into that Impel Down greatness, son. So Impel Down averaged in 11.5. Then we had to Marine Ford, man. Now, Marine Ford did have a couple episodes which averaged a 9.2, or like we gave us like 9.2, 9.4, 9.0, 9.8, or whatever. But overall, the, the 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 higher end of the spectrum was much higher. Like you had like a lot of 10s, you had 11s, 12s, 11s, uh, Ace's uh, death episode got an 11.2, um, Blackbeard showing up got 11.4, uh, Whitebeard's death, 10.4, Shank showing up, 11.7, you know, um, those legendary moments of... Uh, Luffy versus the Three Admirals, 10.5. So overall, you could see that One Piece was already back. Like, it was back, man. It was no longer doing 7s or 6s or 5s. It barely was doing 9s or 8s. Now it was going in 11s, 12s, 13s. It was going ham. Episode 477 got a 13.0. Episode 480, 13.8. I mean, Marine Ford and Impel Down, truly. Because during that time, like I said, Marine Ford in the manga... Impel Down slash Marine Ford in the anime, it was killing it. Post Marine Ford, Marine Ford, Return to Sabaori, Marine Ford, like, God, it was killing it. It was killing it. So then the post war stuff, uh, it, and now I'm back. So see, this is the difference. This is how I know that it was legitimately hype from people just tuning in every week. Impel Down and Marine Ford were killing it that much, right? So then post Marine Ford, you're back. 9.7s, 8. 9.4, 9.3, 9.6, 9.0, 10.2, 11, 8.7. See, so that's how I know. That's how I know that hype goes a long way, bruh. Hype goes a long way. Uh, episodes 490 and 491 uh, brought in pretty good ratings. 12.2, 11.5. But overall, post Marine Ford, it did pretty solid. Even the final episode, 516, did a 9.0. So the average uh, rating for the whole Summit War, the Paramount War Saga, was a 10.5. Which is very, very good considering where we came from at before that with Thriller Bark and Annie's Lobby averaging, uh, like, what was it? What was Annie's Lobby again? Or Water 7? It was a, uh, so Thriller Bark was a 7.7. .7, and uh, the average, and the entirety for Water 7 was 10.4, right? So very, very good for the entire Summit War saga, man. It was going ham, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and cover uh, the, since... I love I love this arc with all my heart. Return to Sabaody. I'm gonna cover Return to Sabaody and Fishman Island, and then um, that'll be it for for this installment of the Recon's piece. But um, but yeah. So so here we head into the time skip, and we have uh, Return to Sabaody, my favorite arc, the goat, absolute greatness. It came back. Episode five sixteen had a nine point six. Episode five seventeen, which is the first episode back from the time skip, eleven point one. 10.2, 10.1, 12.6, 10.8, People tuned in for post time skip One Piece, man. They were tuning in. They were like, yo, post time skip One Piece, let's go. So they were tuning in, man. Uh, Fishman Island, uh, 10.5, 10.3, 12.9, 11.2, 10. I mean, by then you could see that like the hype for post time skip One Piece was there. I mean, people really wanted to see those episodes. And then it went back down the earth and started fluctuating. 8.2, 11, 10, 9, 10.4. Uh, one interesting one for me, episode 521, 
which is the Jet Pistol episode. I got a 10.8, like whenever Luffy says, too slow, that legendary moment. Um, that got a 10.8. Uh, and then you have uh, the Toriko and One Piece episode got a 10. And then aside from that, Fishman Island, from then on out, uh, was pretty much in the 8s, 7s, 8s, 9s, 10.7, 7s. So it, it, it started fluctuating and averaging uh, just a... Uh, Pretty much what it was going back to, which would be its average from then on out, eight, nine, seven, you know, ten. But what was very, very interesting to me, and then the final episode that I'll talk about here, episode five seventy four, got a uh, got a ten point two. So the overall Fishman Island saga got a ten point zero as its rating. So you you could see the difference in how One Piece managed to overcome its time slot change with just the anime and the manga just banging and going ham on its content and people legitimately being interested in the story and wanting to tune in every single week, man. And you could see the differences there. You could see the hype. You could see everything was going in. But what's interesting to me is that, you know, uh, Conan and One Piece, which I always go back to because those are the ones that I know are the ra were, the, were the ratings juggernauts. And I did this interview for Conan and look back at, like, the differences now. Conan now, and even, like, during the late 2000s, was only doing like eights and nines and tens when in the beginning was doing 20s and 21, 19. So overall, people just weren't watching television as much as before. But One Piece during Impel on Marine Ford broke through all of that and was bringing monster ratings, man. And the very first thing that I thought of was, I really wish that we would have gotten that over here in America, man. Like airing One Piece in the same time slot that Naruto had at that nine o'clock Saturday with the right commercials. But during the Paramount War Saga, during Water Savings Lobby, you know, during Sabaori, Amazon Lily, Intel Down, Marine Ford, like, I wonder just how big One Piece could have gotten over here. If, if, if Because people were genuinely just interested, man. And, uh, and that's incredible to me. Like, it really is cool to me seeing that the, the, the content overcame the circumstances. Like, even though the circumstance said... People aren't tuning in anymore. Television ratings are down in general. Uh, time slot change. All that stuff, right? And and it won't be just fell off a cliff when it comes to ratings. I mean, five, sixes, sevens during any lobby. Through the Bark wasn't doing that well. Saba already did pretty good. But then you had Impel Down, which at the same time was during the Marine Ford boom. And it was just like back like in, that, like in the beginning. Going ham. Everybody was coming in and tuning in every single week, and that's so cool to me, man. That is so cool to me. That just shows that if there's greatness, people are tuning in, man. And especially if it's both greatness that's happening in the manga and in the anime. Like, people are high for the manga coming in to watch the anime. People anime only are coming in and they're watching too, man. It's very, very impressive stuff. And it's so cool to me to see uh, certain episodes and their ratings and, like, what they did. Uh, man, dude. Just to take like a quick look, even though I'm not going to go through them very much. Like, just for like, another quick example, uh, Punk Hazard never got to a 10. Um, and Punk Hazard got like 7s, 9s, 8s, 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 7s, 6.2. You know, that now you, now you could truly see like the, the average it would have from from this point on. Average 7.96. Then, then during Dressrosa, it was actually doing pretty well during Dressrosa, I'm not going to lie. It was in the 9s, 8s, 7s, 9s, 8s, 7s, 9.7. So it was it was doing relatively well. It even got a ten point two during episode seven hundred twenty nine, a ten again. Like it was it, it like it started going in into like swimwear again. Uh, the recorded one stops right here seven forty five. Even though we have ratings for the latest episodes, but um, that's raw stuff right there, man. I just I wanted to go through mainly like the pre time skip heading into the beginning of the time skip, just to show, you know, before the time slot change, after time slot changes, how certain arcs did. And certain episodes did, and I just I wanted to just go through this with y'all, man, in a recon piece because I thought it'd just be really really cool to to go through these because I find this kind of stuff interesting. It's so cool to me that the Return of Sabari did so well because everybody was just so hyped for Volume sixty one. Volume sixty one is one of the most sold volumes, you know, my favorite volume in the series. The, like one of the most sold volumes in the series because everybody was just so hyped to see the Straw Hats post time skip, especially with their anime only. Like yo, and those those are the best ratings in the series up until where we are right now like it's, it, it has not gone back to that high of 12.9 10 12.6 like what it was when they return return to stop already and that's so fascinating to me even though fishman island was still doing very very well but just that that uh, seeing like syrup village doing really well and broadier and along park in a certain episodes and uh warship island the apis arc doing phenomenal <laughs> 
uh, Alabasta averaging really well, how Skypea did, Water 7 and Ennis Lobby, which we continue to be such a, such a masterpiece of an arc, fluctuating, and, and what happened with its circumstances, and how we had a time skip change, or a, not a time skip, but a time slot change right after the I Wanna Live, which brought in a 13.3. It went from a 13.3 rating to a 6 rating, its lowest ever, and it stayed that way for a long time until Luffy vs. Lucci brought it back up to, to shape. Thriller Bark didn't do very well on television, and... And then you have Sabaody returning it back, but then Impel Down just killing it while Marineford's killing it in the manga. And very, very interesting stuff, man. But let me know what y'all thought about this episode of the Recon's Beast, man. Um, and what y'all thought about the overall, just the ratings. And, and if you have done your own research on it, and does this kind of stuff interest you? Uh, because I love this kind of stuff, man. And it's very, very interesting. Like, what are your overall thoughts on... On, on how everything went down in the history of One Piece's television ratings, and and we'll see what happens whenever Wano airs. I look forward to seeing Wano's TV ratings every week and seeing how it does, because we know how much people are gonna love that arc in Japan, because we know how much we're gonna love it over here in North America. So, look forward to seeing those and the Reveries ratings and whatnot, and it's a lot of fun, man. But anyways, I hope you all, I hope you all have an awesome rest of day. Look forward to that upcoming Recon piece that we're gonna be covering that OVA special that I finally found. Uh, but aside from that, man, that's it for me. This is a really, really awesome just look back into One Piece's TV ratings going back all the way as far as October 20th of 1999. And it was uh, so cool to go through this with all of you, man. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. This has been the Recon's Piece, man. Have an awesome, awesome day. Mm -hmm.